This video is going to give you an introduction into Cryptosporidium, which is a protozoan parasite that can infect swimming pools. The problem, the main problem with Cryptosporidium is the fact that it's pretty much resistant to the chlorine levels that you would find in a typical swimming pool. So the chlorine levels that would kill for example, to give you a bit of a contrast here, a comparison, uh, the levels of, of chlorine that would kill E. coli in under a minute would take 10 days to kill Cryptosporidium. So largely chlorine is going to be pretty much ineffective at dealing with it. But the, organis the organism itself, the way that it works is that it exists within uh, a protective shell called an oocyst. It's, um, it's a spore that basically enables the cryptosporidium to remain unaffected by the chlorine since the chlorine can't actually make physical contact with the organism itself because of the fact that it's protected inside this oocyst. So what it does is it it's in a dormant state inside the oocyst and it's waiting to become uh, to be ingested and when it's ingested it goes down into the stomach and there are strong stomach acids that help to break down the shell and it basically sort of hatches out for want of a better word inside the infected person uh, or animal uh, and what what happens is it goes through its life cycle inside the person and that life cycle involves the production of millions more of these oocysts. There's over a, uh, if someone was to um, expel uh, diarrheal fecal matter in a swimming pool, there's over a million oocysts in each gram of fecal contamination. And um, studies have shown that it takes only one of these oocysts to um, make somebody ill. So what happens is um, the person that ingests the cryptosporidium oocysts in about five to seven days they're going to start to uh, become ill with symptoms like severe diarrhea, uh, vomiting, uh, abdominal pain, uh, a low-grade fever and they're going to they're going to be at risk of expelling the. Uh, well, I mean, that's how the cryptosporidium gets back out into the in, in, back out into the environment is in the expelled um, fecal uh, uh, the, in the expelled fecal matter, and then once it's back in the environment in, in in infected water, it can survive for quite long periods. It can survive for another six months, just sort of waiting for the opportunity to become uh, ingested again. And what makes things even more challenging for a pool operator is the fact that a person that's been ill with cryptosporidia, after they get better um, and they're no longer suffering from the symptoms, they can still actually be infective with the cryptosporidium for another 14 days following um, this, the clearing up of the symptoms that they had. So it's very difficult really to keep to guarantee that you're not going to get cryptosporidium in your swimming pool and when you do the chlorine is going to be largely ineffective at dealing with it um, and we'll cover how to control and, and prevent and, and mitigate um, when it comes to cryptosporidium in another video but with this video the idea was just to give you an introduction into the organism and tell you a little bit about how it worked how it works and how it infects people.